the Boston situation. It's the perfect opportunity for a free state shadow ad. Many of you have probably forgotten what these are, but back around 2003, the Free State Project activists, some of them, had the really bright idea of uh, following the news closely, and when a tyrannical thing happens, they would post an ad in the local paper. For instance, in North Carolina, I think, or maybe South Carolina, there was some kind of a raid on a school. There were some inflammatory pictures. And uh, the Free Staters used those pictures in an ad urging people to leave that area and move to New Hampshire. It was very successful and efficient. It resulted in mainstream media coverage down there for the Free State Project. But not much of that has been really done uh, in the last few years. At least if it has, I haven't heard about it. So if you're looking for something to do to make yourself feel a little less helpless in the face of terrorism and tyranny down there, this is what you can do. Call up a local paper down there, maybe the one in Watertown. Not, it doesn't have to be the Boston Globe, just a small paper maybe. Buy an ad. The ad says if you didn't like having your uh, home searched without a warrant, come to New Hampshire, move here. In a sense, the smaller the paper, the better, because you probably will get coverage in the mainstream press for your little ad that hopefully only cost 40 or 50 bucks. Now, if you do feel helpless, maybe you shouldn't. This one is playing out differently from 9-11. I was just looking at two different Union Leader articles. One of them was written roughly the day after the bombing. It said something along the lines of, get used to, you know, more security and it was kind of a pro-security article well the public response to that if you look at the comments was i counted up uh, 13 to 1 against the idea of increased security it was 13 to 1 pro-liberty comments on that union leader article now a few days later around april 17th or 18th uh Union leader Puff piece appeared, praising basically the Manchester Police Department, which apparently had some sort of involvement. It almost made me think of some of the fawning British newspaper coverage of the Somme offensive in 1916. But again, despite the more mainstream, you know, likable type of coverage, and this was just this was just a Puff piece basically. It wasn't a piece advocating something controversial necessarily. Well, even that piece got two-to-one pro-liberty comments in response in the comments section. And again, the union leader is going to have our, you know, viewers who are a little bit more conservative, but those are the type of people that don't like terrorists, right? So I think it's a fairly good place to go for a bear, bellwether sense of what people are thinking. Ideally, I should monitor other papers, but that's what I saw in union leader, so that should make you feel better. I do want to, though, express a little bit of credit where credit is due. It looks like, from all the coverage I've heard and seen, the authorities haven't actually physically harmed any bystanders yet. And I don't, I didn't get the sense there was much property damage either. So some limited credit goes there where it's due if that many cops were stomping around an area and there weren't any, they didn't shoot anybody. That's a start. It's better than L.A. I'm sure there must have been a few cases where there were police that were briefly scared and exercised some restraint, so good on them. However, you know, there are abuses, and there are many that we probably haven't heard about yet, some we will never hear about. One of them was reported on Free Talk Live around April 19th. Apparently a free stater was in Watertown, who normally lives in New Hampshire, and reported that police were pointing their firearms in the direction of civilians and civilian houses. She said she'd never seen such improper use of firearms. I hope some pictures of this kind of thing uh, have gotten out because I haven't seen any yet. Speaking of pictures, if you've got some from down there, uh, shoot me an email, but don't shoot me. <laughs> Send an email to RidleyReport at live.com and... Let me know what you've got, where to find it, and uh, grant me permission to use it without restriction on the Ridley Report, and I probably will, here and there. 
One of the reasons people come up with conspiracy theories blaming the federal government or government in general for these kinds of things is that they benefit. They benefit through increased powers, by being able to look like the good guy, because they have you know a suspect that they'll put forward and connect him with something absolutely horrific. Another reason they make good suspects is because it doesn't really have to be the entire federal government. Uh, for there to be complicity. Three or four federal operatives could pull something like Boston off by themselves if they wanted to, just because they maybe wanted to see their salaries go up. Or a high-ranking official could have two or three ex-military buddies, and all kinds of things can happen sort of unofficially by officials, because there are so many different officials out there. That's why they're suspected. Mostly, though, because they benefit. We don't want to ever be in a position where we're perceived as benefiting from these kinds of wicked acts. On the other hand, we do want to make sure that when they happen, we're able to come out stronger on the other end if we can. For instance, the way American, America came out, maybe you could say, stronger after World War II than it was before World War II. But we definitely can come out of these kinds of events stronger. It's not natural for that to happen, but we can make it happen if terrorism and tyranny pushes us toward greater liberty activity. If, instead of watching the television and feeling as though we are being acted upon, we simply default to action, reaction, counteraction, whatever you want to call it, then we come out ahead every time one of these things happens. Not naturally, but through willpower and resilience. Reacting properly. Speaking of reacting properly, that's what I think you should do right now. Stop listening to this Ridley O, although maybe you listen to the ad at the end. But go uh, uh, straight from this Ridley-O to your computer, your sign-making machine, your car. I don't know where it is you go to get to the nearest liberty endeavor that you can engage in. But that's what you should do. Do some pro-liberty activity in the next hour. That's therapeutic. And it's part of deterring attacks like this.